Hi guys, welcome to uh, Science at Home. My name is Heather and today I've been joined by Rock, one of our PhD students, and we're going to do a little bit of a get to know you session with him and ask him some questions about his research. But uh, like my last interview with Connor, you're now Dr. Rock, aren't you? Yes, technically, technically, yes, I have had my Viva. I am almost done with corrections, not quite yet, but yes. So that's, that's like a really massive achievement, so congratulations. Thank and uh, if anyone has been following us on Facebook, they will have seen the epic photograph that we did with you standing on the moon with everyone pointing at you. We singled you out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You didn't do that with Connor, though. No, that's because of reasons. Yes. <laughs> For now. But that's why, you know, we're going to do these interviews, just to get to know everyone a little bit more. So, um... We're going to start off with just some easy questions. They're not going to be hard, and we're just going to have a bit of a chat so that everyone can get to know you. So, um, my first question is, Rock, uh, where are you from, and how did you get to be here in AOP? Well, I'm from Slovenia originally, um, but I've been in England for actually for quite a few years, uh, doing my undergraduate uh, degree first in Cambridge, and then my master's at UCL. And actually, it was a lecturer at UCL uh, who um, well introduced me to uh, our observatory. He was saying, "Oh, there's people in, up there doing interesting things related to things that he, he he's doing as well." And, and he's actually my UCL supervisor uh, now, so that worked quite well. So he introduced me to it, and I sort of applied, and, and here I am. Um, so that's a very brief story. Yeah. And you've been here for about four and a half years or so. Uh, four and a half. Yes, yes, yeah. that's about right. Because you and I have sort of been in the same organization for around about the same time, so that's how I remember. We've been in the same organisation for the number of years, so yes. so right. We're going to talk a bit about your research, and your research is actually I find quite interesting. Um, so can you explain to everyone at home the research that you do? Yes. So I'm concerned with um, essentially the dust in the tails of comets, and I look at it in various different ways. I did uh, theoretical modelling, uh, so simulations on the computer um, of sort of little dust particles and how they might reflect light. And I also uh, used observations, uh, both from ground and space-based observatories, um, to see um, what those tails, tails behave like and what you can learn about the dust and the comets, ideally from that. And so, just speaking of like looking at comets and looking at their tails, so have you actually used telescopes yourself to look at these comets to do your research? Uh, no, not as such, no. I did go to uh, Bulgaria where we have a connection with the Rosian Observatory there, the National Observatory uh, in Bulgaria. Um, and I was sort of trained a little bit on using their two meter uh, telescope, two meter diameter of the, of the mirror. Um, however, I did not use that myself for real research. I did use uh, some ground-based data from the VLT, the Very Large Telescope, uh, in Chile. Uh, however, it was Stefano, my supervisor, who uh, took the data and I was sitting at my computer at the time, uh, still doing the theoretical modelling, mm -hmm. so I sadly didn't join him down there. Um, I do use that data, as I say, I also use space, space observatory data, but of course I don't go to space to take the photo, that just comes down to us. It would be really awesome if you could go to space and actually do your research, I mean that would be really fun. Um, so you're talking there about uh, like modelling things, and so that sounds to me like it would be very difficult. So my next question is, uh, what is the most difficult part of your research? Like, Have you hit any snags along the way? Well, yes, there's, there's always snags and difficulties and, you know, um, hopefully we overcome them one by one and, and see what, where it gets us. Um, the biggest one actually was uh, from the uh, simulations and theoretical modelling, uh, where it, it simply turned out that um, with information we know about the cometary dust, about how large the grains are and how complex they are, uh, and um, from the information we need to input or from that into the computers, uh, it's just impossible for us to simulate that properly with anything that's, you know, less than a massive NASA supercomputer. Um, and even a collaborator of mine did use a massive NASA supercomputer and sort of barely got her results in. Um, so that's quite a limitation of the work at the time and it was very frustrating. It's like, oh no, but I was doing this so well. Um, so then you, you know, have to st just go back, uh, look at the whole picture, see, okay, so this, what can we learn from this part that we did do? Uh, what else can we learn from some other parts? Um, so it's always you know, good to find something to uh, move on with and then also obviously get as much as you possibly can from the, the, the other part, that even if you couldn't finish that part of the project. So it would be your dream to use a big, huge NASA supercomputer? 
Oh, I mean, really pretty nice, yes. Yeah, that sounds like it would be quite an epic thing to say. Like, hey, yes, I've just done some work on a NASA supercomputer. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yes, yes. Um, so, like, you're clearly very passionate about the work that you do. So, can I ask, have you always loved astronomy? Uh, that's kind of a sort of a, a mixed bag. I've always been uh, interested in the sky, both at day and at night. Um, and I have sort of, in my formative years, gone to a couple of astronomy summer camps and things like that. Um, but I was actually interested more in particle physics most of the time. Uh, and then as I got to university, um, I realized that actually I started finding the astronomy topics more interesting than the uh, particle physics and quantum physics and, uh, topics. Um, so it's kind of, I was always in the natural sciences, physical sciences area. Um, it's just of where I was about to specialize wasn't entirely clear to me, although maybe some people who knew me earlier might have said, oh yes, of course you'd be an astronomer. Mm -hmm. um, um, but yeah, so I chose this path, and yeah. And so what uh, topics did you like study in school? Because I know a lot of people watching will be wondering, what can I do to study in school to get to be an astronomer? So what were some of the subjects you studied mm -hmm. back in Slovenia? Yes, yes, so yes, my, my path might be a bit unusual for, for, for around here because yes, I started in Slovenia, then in England, then I'm in Northern Ireland, so it's, it's quite a lot of steps. And even in Slovenia, sort of in, let's call it high school, um, I did two slightly different programs. So for the last two years I did International Baccalaureate, which was not a requirement, but it made a bit easier the transition from uh, being in Slovenia to maybe studying abroad, which I was thinking about a lot at the time. Um, and the International Baccalaureate has got quite a a program has got quite a distinct uh, set of rules, so you know you have to have a, a language, you have to have a uh, social science, you have to have a natural science, you have to have a math maths, and then this, you know a couple more spaces for other subjects. Um, and so within that, I chose to do uh, physics and chemistry and obviously the mathematics. Um, and there's also level, the choice, obviously higher lower level, uh, well has to higher and standard level. Um, and so I went with the, in, with the natural sciences, I went into the high level. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in these things, it's always, I think, important to, well, yeah, to double down on that, of course. Um, and uh, then the same thing happened when I got to the university. So in Cambridge, it's a natural sciences course, actually much like in Trinity when you were talking to Connor. Um, so it's quite broad. So it's not just physics, physics, maths. It's, it's a broad choice of subjects. And again, I would very much encourage people to uh, keep uh, open mind because um, I almost actually switched to geology. Hold uh, on, your name is Rock, and you're studying geology, which yes, is the I study did. of rocks. rocks. Yes, <laughs> and the puns, the, the infinite puns. They, they must have been um, devastated whenever you chose not to continue with geology. Yes, they, they did. They did say that oh, uh, a rock has left the earth sciences department. <laughs> it's a sad day. Um, <laughs> Because I did do it in my first year, exactly, yes. Uh, but I decided that sort of I'm more interested in the astrophysics topics. But now again, I'm looking at cometary dust and small bodies in the solar system. So that's almost space, space geology. Rocks. Yeah, space rocks. There you go. Okay. Uh, and space does rock, of course. <laughs> um, so, yes, you know, keep it in mind. Try and figure out what you find interesting at a time and, you know, put your efforts in, in there. But obviously, you also have to ideally keep a broader level of uh, knowledge up as much as possible because it's useful both for your progress in, in the field and your progress in, in life. Of course. Mm. Um, so you went from Slovenia to Cambridge to Northern Ireland yes. um, and we all know that uh, getting into astronomy means you get to travel quite a lot as we can already see you've done. Um, so can I ask where is the coolest or most unusual place that doing your research has taken you? Mm. Yes, so as I said I actually haven't done research abroad as much. I've been to uh, Bulgaria. Uh, however, the most interesting conference location that I went to was in Uruguay. Uruguay? Yes. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Um, which was my first time in the Southern Hemisphere, um, which is um, quite exciting. Especially exciting when you look at the night sky um, and you figure out that Orion is the wrong way around. The moon is the wrong way around, isn't the, it? The moon, the moon is, yes, sort of in the northern sky rather than the southern sky and it's quite kind of upside down as well. Yeah. I mean, of course, you know, if you were to look like this, then you'd still be the <laughs> right way around, but it's not how we naturally look at these things. Yeah. Um, so it's quite interesting. Sally didn't get to see the Magellanic clouds because we were in the city of Montevideo, so uh, it's a slightly wrong time of year as well. Uh, so that's still an ambition of mine to, to go back there and um, see the 
the our satellite galaxies. Oh, that's really yeah. incredible. Um, sadly, we've come to the end of our interview, um, but I have one final question that I want to, to ask you. Um, and we've already touched upon it and going into school and what you should be doing. So my question for you is, why should more people uh, consider uh, science for their future career? Mm. Yes, well, I think science and understanding, so scientific understanding and the way of thinking is really important in today's world for a variety of reasons. Um, mainly because, you know, our lives these days are quite governed by technology and technology has its basis in science. Um, and so understanding uh, the scientific concepts, the, the way we think as scientists, um, I think can help a lot to everyone who uh, just, you know, interacts with the world at large. Um, and it can help us understand better the processes that, that are happening around us, even if it is uh, to do with a pandemic in the world. Um, when you know, understanding of how exponential growth works would definitely um, give you a better understanding of, of, of the whole picture. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's one aspect, of course. So, so the, back, just the general background will help you out with coping with the world, well, uh, understanding the world today at large. And the other part is just, it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> um, you know, f everything, if you look deeply enough, it's just so interesting. And, uh, and uh, you know, taking, bit, well, not necessarily bits apart, but uh, delving into a subject of the, the natural world around us, that is science, any bit of that, that is always science. So I think it's really cool to learn more about um, that. Rob, thank you so much for joining us for the interview today. Um, we'll have Rob back again at another date uh, for one of our live Q&A sessions. So if you've got any uh, questions that you'd like to ask, please feel free to send them in. Um, thanks again for joining us for another Science at Home session. Uh, Rob, thanks again and uh, have a nice day.